Put one there. So if you bear with me. Right? It was just for a tasting so I could. Uh, come on. Can you see if we can write off another bottle? No, no that's okay. Don't need to worry about it. Sure, absolutely. Are you positive? <laughs> Whiskey tasting, here we go. Right, now you, you might want to... Uh, right. There's a few steps when it comes to appreciating a whiskey, and I'll talk you through each of the steps. Oh, so, the first thing is, you can pick up your whiskies. Okay. The first thing a lot of people look at is the colour of the whiskey, because the colours can tell you some things about it. So you hold up the whiskey, you hold up the light, check the colour out. Now the colour in this case tells you nothing, but you hold up your whiskey, so that's good. I'm glad we're all listening. Now, what, this, uh, what the colour can tell you is uh, what type of barrels that it's finished in. This was quite tricky because they had colouring into it, so we can't really tell in this it's case. It's like, yeah, like a shining, like a diamond, you know? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Couldn't have said that. A gold, you know the diamond, you will a gold. get my job quickly, I can tell. <laughs> uh, the, but we'll move on to the best bit now. Um, so the first thing to do is if you swirl the whiskey around in your glass, you'll notice that eventually there'll be small drips coming down the side of it. If you stare at the glass slowly, Stop for a second and we'll see if you see these drips coming down the side here. Yeah. So these are called the legs of a whiskey. Now the thicker the legs can mean that the, it can be a more rich whiskey. Okay. Okay, so that's one thing. Now if you don't, if the legs move quite quickly, it's going to be quite light. If the move, legs move quite slowly, it'll be quite thick and rich. So you'll see them just coming down here, just, just down, the, down here. Okay. Can you see them? Yes. Yeah. Um, so this whiskey here, because I was saying it's quite waxy in your mouth, it has the legs do move quite slowly. So it's just so you know. Now, we'll move on to the fun bits. Smelling the whiskey. A lot of people nose a whiskey. I'll tell you some tricks for this bit as well. Mm. If you're ever nosing a whiskey, the first thing you smell, 40% alcohol. It'll smell quite okay, strong. Yeah. Right? Take your nose away from it, breathe in fresh air, and then go back to it. The more times you go back to it, the more you'll begin to smell through the alcohol. Mm. And that's the hard bit. Another trick, smelling your arm, it resets your nose. So you so, and then go back to it, and honestly, it'll begin to smell a wee bit sweeter. You'll be able to notice it does smell a wee I bit sweeter. I start feeling. Yeah? A new wish. Can, and this is going to be a hard one, so I don't expect you to get anything here, but do you, do you smell anything in it? There's not a right or wrong answer. You can say no, it's fine. I had the, it's not that strong as the first time. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, it's definitely. Strange. I still smell alcohol, but not. It's it's different it's than the different. first time. Was very strong. Yeah, and then it has a out. Exactly. So that's your nose getting used to the alcohol. Anyway, let's move to the best mm -hmm. bit: drinking the stuff. So, I call the first step. It's quite a strange one. It sounds a bit weird, but bear, trust the process. So. The first sip, I call it kissing the whiskey. So literally just put a tiny bit of whiskey on your lips, kind of use it as a bit of lip balm. Don't try and drink it too quickly. If you're American, you've already drank it. Okay. You get no flavor, you get burning. Don't do it that. It happens before. Yeah, so just put a little bit on your lips. So what we're doing is we're getting your mouth used to 40% alcohol. I'm gonna be honest with you and say that the first sip is always the worst sip. No matter how much of whiskey you've drank, it's the same for me, okay? okay. That never changes. The first sip is the worst one. We'll try that one more time. So try it this time, try another wee, just a small sip. Let's put, put, wash it around your mouth. Don't try and get too much in the way of flavour. Just a little sip, wee sip. How's it, how's it so far? Quite strong though, yeah? We're agreeing it's quite strong. It's, 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 it's strong, but not like something like burning, stuff like that. Because it's a sipping drink, and that's yeah. the trick. Like, a lot of Americans, it's usually Americans. They, they shot it and they go, oh, it burns so much yeah. in my throat, man. And you're like, well, it burns so much because you just shot it whiskey. What do you expect? Um, but as it's a sipping drink, we'll take our time with it. We're going to do this one more time. We're going to have one more wee sip, just a really small okay. sip. Put it on your tongue for just a couple of seconds. Let it sit there. You'll know when the right time to drink it is. And everyone's taste is different. Mmm. Yeah, okay. That, that wasn't an unpleasant thing. I got that. Believe it or not, what you're yeah. drinking is 46%. 46%. It's actually quite strong. You know, and you're but drinking... No, you won't yeah. have feeling like... like That's what I was... Strong. Yeah, it doesn't taste like 46%. Now, we're going to try a wee experiment here. So, just bear with me for one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gente, muito interessante. Depois eu vou, tra eu vou traduzir. So, what we have is we've got here a little bit of water. It is just water. That's all it is. Oh. What I'd recommend trying to do is maybe add three or four drops, just drops of water into your whiskey. Okay. You might need to squeeze a little bit into it first. Yeah, squeeze so like, it. Yeah. Three or four drops. That's good. Cool. 
Give it a wee swirl around your glass. This is you can pretend you're fancy. That's what I do. <laughs> now you can go back to smelling. Give it a wee smell. Smell is very light. Much lighter, yeah. So all we're doing, we're just diluting the alcohol a little bit, gets all the flavours to the knob. Now have a little sip. Now it's not going to be magically smooth, okay. but it will be different. So you can try this. Now you've added four drops. Four drops of water to that. So what are we thinking? Yeah. Different? It's light or not? I feel strong, but not burning. I, I feel like it, how can I say, warm? Yes. yes. But not like burning or... Yeah, if no, here's the thing. If you if, if you're still feeling a slight sting yeah. around your lips or on the tip of your tongue, that is not the flavour of the whiskey. That is the flavour of the alcohol. Oh, oh, oh. To get rid of that, add just a little bit more water to it. You can always add a little bit more in. You can't take it back out again. So I always recommend add a little bit at a time. Just a little bit at a time. You'll be amazed how little you need to add as well. It's crazy how like small amounts massively That's change. Because yeah. a lot of people uh, put a lot of ice. But, now, ice, yeah, it's already but messed, you know? a little bit of water, now I learned a little bit of water is enough than a lot of ice. But I think like, who used to drink for them need, they won't feel like, you know, for the new person, they can add the little bit of water. What do you recommend? I've drank a lot of whiskey and I still have water. Still water. Yeah. Absolutely. Some whiskey is really, really, really strong. Yeah. You know, for any whiskey, some whiskeys go up to 60% alcohol. I remember the first time when yeah. I tried the black label, I feel like some fire is going there. Because as yeah. he said, you just yeah. uh, swallow, like you didn't enjoy or take yeah. it easy. <laughs> exactly. But the thing is, that, that kind of goes back to what I was saying, you know, if you want to enjoy whiskey, there's nothing wrong with whiskey and ice. I actually had whiskey and ice yeah. last night. The only thing I will say is if you do add ice to whiskey, it will chill your drink. It will dilute your drink and it will be easier to drink it as well. The only problem is you will lose flavour. So if you want the most flavour, have whiskey at room temperature and just with water. And that's all you need. But it's personal preference. There's not a right or wrong answer to it. And the other thing is, once you open the bottle, how long we can use it? That is a great question. That's a really hard question to answer this one. I will try and explain. Imagine this whiskey is full and you want your thought, I'm quite thirsty one night, I'm going to have a little bit. So you have a little bit, you take it down to about there, you put the cork back on, seal it, hide it in a cupboard. You've probably got quite a while, you've probably got maybe a year or two years before oh. you'll notice any difference. One year? Yeah. One year? Oh yeah, probably. Really? But here's the thing, if you were to add, drink a little bit more, say you were very thirsty one night, you got down to about there, at this point you've actually replaced more of the bottle with air than with whiskey. The flavours okay. will change quicker, so it will be it will do what we call oxidising it. So basically, the flavour will change. Now, I'm not saying it will get worse. I'm not saying it will get better, but it will be different. I had a grandfather. He insisted that his bottle of black label that he bought 10 years ago tasted exactly the same as it did the day he bought it. I'm also willing to guarantee that he didn't have any taste because I can assure you it did not taste the same as the day he bought it. It was disgusting, mm. right? But <laughs> it really was, I'm not, I'm not making that up. Um, so it's a great question, but I would always say to you, it depends how much you drink. If you have a little bit, you've probably got a year, maybe even a year and a bit, you know? If you're me, you've got maybe a month. A month. So okay. my, yeah, my yours too. <laughs> Market research. Yeah, exactly. That, that's what it is. Um, but uh, yeah, great. that's a great question. Now, the other thing I will say about whiskey, this is just so you know, where are you guys travelling from? Can I ask? We are, going to, uh, we are going to Dublin, Ireland. You, you, are you from Dublin, sorry? Are you from? Yes. Oh, nice, cool. Excellent. <laughs> okay. If The only thing I was going to say is if you are from a warmer country, I know yeah. Ireland's not, yeah. so don't worry. Yeah. I'm, your, I'm your originally from Brazil. Oh, Brazil cool. is a very warm country. Uh, people there love it, uh, especially a red label and black label. I, I, it's so popular everywhere around the world, apart from Scotland. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, the reason I was asking is purely for the fact if you are from a warmer country, the heat does have a problem, have like changed it. What can happen, imagine you've opened it, you've had a little bit, you put the cork back on, you leave it. It can still evaporate from inside ah, okay. the bottle because it's such high alcohol. So you can find out that you might have left the whiskey there, but there might only be that much left and you've not drank any of it. Oh, right. And it's just, it's called the angel oh, share, so it evaporates. I say that to my girlfriend all the time. She doesn't believe me. Mm. Um, she's right. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> 
but that, that is whiskey to be honest. But if suppose this side left, right, if I drink that much, yep. so the rest of half in a month, two months? Yes, I would say so, yeah, something, you probably, probably, I would say even, you probably still got about six, but, seven months. But leave it in the fridge or no? No, or the fridge. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a good question, it's entirely up to you, but I would always recommend just a dark cupboard. A dark okay, cupboard. Okay, dark cupboard. Not, the only thing I would say to you is two tech, tricks for its egg, mm. like keeping a whiskey. The first one is keep it out of direct sunlight. Okay. okay. Just, just keep it out of sunlight, and um, because that can cause it to evaporate. Oh, right. We make it a mistake, mistake at home. Because there, I leave it beside the window, and there is a yeah. sun comes. You know. Well, that's all. I mean, to be fair, if you get sun in Ireland, mm. good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. 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 You know very well. I don't think you have to worry too much. Mm. Okay. Uh, but it's always good to leave it in sort of a darker cupboard. Mm. Okay. It just it just works a bit better. Very good, especially yeah. in Brazil, for example. Exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, the other thing about storing whiskey is keep the bottles stored upright. Yeah. Don't put them on their side like okay. wine, keep them upright like that. The reason for that is because it is so alcoholic that if they've got a cork in the top of them, mm. the alcohol will begin to erode the cork. So Very you fact. might find that you'll have bits of cork floating around your drink. You don't want that. Um, otherwise you've got to use a sieve and get it out. Put it into, anyway, Very that's fact. a whole problem in itself. Mm. Um, but that but that is really no, the only no, two tricks. Really good questions yes, asking from yes. You know, Very good. Yeah, especially... In Nairobi, I live in Nairobi, but I don't use. I barely drink whiskey. But when I was living in Brazil, I used to have a lot of whiskey, uh, especially um, with a uh, energetic drink or which one's that one? Uh, uh, Red Bull. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or uh, with uh, wow. coconut ice. We make co co uh, coconut water and ice. You and we mix with whiskey. You're not the first person to tell yeah. me this, actually, and I need to try this because yes. someone keeps telling me about this. Um, yeah, it's very popular there, especially in the uh, between the young people. Okay. So we make like uh, coconut water, put in the the ice trays, and then mix it with it. Yeah. Especially red label. Yeah, that's what it's people were popular. telling me about. They were telling me about that. I'm, yeah. I'm not making up because yeah, there's well, a lot of Brazilian. I know there's a lot of Brazilian yeah. people that live in Ireland, yeah. which is fair, um, and a lot of them tell me yeah. things like that. And it's really interesting. Yeah. Obviously, we don't have many coconuts yeah. over. Here. Yes. Our climate is terrible. I think because it's, it's, it's very warm there, and then we created this tradition. But the truth is, you can have whiskey any way you like it. If you like it that way, have it yeah. that way. There's not a right or wrong answer. You know. Um, likewise, if you had that whiskey, and be honest and say, I'm really sorry, I just don't like that. That again, it's fine. You're not. You're allowed yeah. not to like it. People have this assumption that they have to like every whiskey in on the shelf, but that's not the case. You know, everyone's taste is different. Yeah. Everyone's favorite food is different, and that is—it's the same with whiskey. It's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Especially what uh, what you told you us earlier, because a lot of people just try the alcohol, don't try the real taste of the drink. The taste of you take the JD, you know, Jack Daniel, yeah. the whiskey. Uh, yes, the, so the, the texture. Compare the, it's different. The taste. Yes, yeah, completely. It's, it's very different. However, yeah. I'll tell you a fun mm. fact for you. So, if Jack Daniel's was mm. made in Scotland, we would call that a single mm. grain whiskey. Because the way it's made is the same as the way some of our whiskey is made. No so, just to give you an idea, this is a wee bit confusing, so I don't want to confuse you too Perfect. much, right? But there are there's quite a few different types of whiskey in Scotland. There are there's a few main ones. I'm just going to quickly tell you. So you've got this one here, single malt. Okay. Single malt. What it really means is it single means it's made in one distillery. Malt means it's made from just malted barley, and Scotch simply means made in Scotland. So one distillery, all from barley, made in Scotland. That is what a single malt really means. Okay. The other type of whiskey that we have, Johnny Walker is one of them. We've got these ones here. I'll pick up black because I like it. This one here is called a blend. Now, what a blend really is, um, a lot of this is what we call green whiskey. Green whiskey. Green. So it's made from different cereals. So that's okay. what I'm saying, Jack Daniels. So it was made over here, we would call that a single grain whiskey. Single grain whiskey. Again, single just means made in one distillery. Now grain, that's a tricky one. Grain means it's made from different cereals. So for example, not just from malted barley, but it can be made from barley, wheat, rye, yeah, and it can be mixed okay. together. Okay, that's what grain whiskey is. Then they add small amounts of different single malts to give it a flavor. That's how they work it. So the way I describe this to people is imagine you're painting a picture, right? Okay. This is a picture, okay? Now, before you paint on your picture, you've got to choose the quality of your canvas. So, for example, the, 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 quality, the higher the quality of the canvas, the better your painting actually will be. So the grain whiskey is the canvas. Then, if you make the, the single malts, the actual paints that you're using, that gives it the flavor, that gives it the picture. Right. And that gives you your artwork. So whiskey is art, what can I say? 
Um, so yeah, that is the that is the different types that we get. So I say it's green whiskey, malt whiskey. We've got blends here. Now because these don't come from one distillery, we can't use the word single. We have to get rid of the word single. That's the reason. We can't no, call it a malt because it's made from more than just malt whiskey. So we call it a blend, and that's where the word blend comes from. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Then I'm just going to quickly confuse you even more here. I'm going to confuse you even more. <laughs> and I leave it here. That's so hard. I need to buy that again. Just to... We've also got this whiskey here. I know this is Johnny Walker, but this one is a little bit different. It's actually the most unique one. Green label. This is not having I haven't, I haven't you know, yeah, heard it's about the green, green label. label. Well. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Blue label is the good one. Like, really, oh. really good one. If okay. you get a chance to try a blue label, you'll you'll put yourself off every other whiskey for life. <laughs> it is so unbelievably smooth. You'll it does not taste like drinking forty percent alcohol. Really? So yeah, so it's really I mean it's really nice. It's a lot of vanilla. It's got a hint of orchard fruits. It's got a, quite a lot of smoke at the end of it, but actually it's elegantly smooth. Wow. Uh, everyone, even whiskey, don't like whiskey like that whiskey. That's how good it is. Um, but in terms of green label, now this one is a wee bit different. Okay. Because this one here is called a blended malt. Okay. Now, because it's a blended malt, now this is actually whiskey made up from four different whiskies. They're Caliskirt, Linkwood, Cragenmore, and Kalila. Oh, uh, here they are the four ingredients. They're the four whiskies that make this. Now, they're four different single malts married together to create this one whiskey. Okay? Now, because this has not got any green whiskey in it, it is just malt, just Here's different single malts. It's called a blended malt. So, what makes the difference in just, is this whiskey is the blend of the these four ingredients. Basically. Exactly that. So I see no green whiskey, just malt whiskies, but because it doesn't come from one distillery, it comes from four. Four distillery. Yeah, we can't use the word single because it's multiple distilleries, okay. so we use the term a blended malt. A so blended that's, malt. The, that's like the third type of whiskey. Type of whiskey so, so you call the third? Third so time. We've got single malts. Okay. Okay. Uh, green whiskey. Green whisk. Blended malts. Blended malts. Ah, okay. And blends. So that's your four different sort of types. Okay. So as I was saying, if Jack Daniels was made in Scotland, we would call that a green whiskey. <laughs> like that. This is compared to Jack Daniels, let's Not say. Not this one, so it would be the other way around. Okay. So we don't, we only sell, I think, one bottle of green whiskey here, actually. Okay. Do you want, I can show it to you if you want me to. Okay. Just so you can have a look. You'll see the price difference, but you'll be, you'll be surprised. <laughs> it's called the Cali. It's oh, made at the different. Caledonian Distillery. This is actually in Edinburgh. It's Haymarket Station. Okay. Just along that way, actually, if you go along. Ah, okay. Literally just along there. Very good. Still, the chimney is still here. We've still got the chimney. Still have the chimney. Um, now, I know this is £750 a bottle. Wow, £752 the bottle. But, but, <laughs> so, look, hear me out here, it is 40 years old. Ah, uh, okay. okay, yeah. That Talisker 41 in the middle, there is a single mall, is also 40 years old. That's £3,000. Guys, just bought a water. Of water of whiskey. Well, so actually, green 3, is quite cheap. 25 euros. Relatively, it, this is a, a it's quite a tricky example because mm. it's an older one. That's why it's expensive, but actually compa compared, compared to, to the single other malt, day. it's actually quite cheap. Exactly. Because they make so much green whiskey, mm. like it's more of an industrial process. They make so much green whiskey. Think of all the blends that they have to make. That's part of the reason for it. So yeah, that's that's what an example of a green whiskey. That that's so you've got the greens, is, okay, you've got the blend, the single malts, you've got the blends, which is these two together. Okay. And you've got the blended malts, which doesn't have any of this. It's just different single malts. Right? The single malts it's changed the, that's especially it. the price. <laughs> yeah, thirty thousand for the five pounds. Yeah, three thousand. Three thousand. Yeah. Three thousand. You're adding an extra zero. Don't worry, it's not that bad. No. <laughs> Buy two. <laughs> Imagine if I. Well, I have wow. to be honest with you, the whiskeys across this side of the room. Guys, it's a really, really, really good question. I've, I've been lucky enough, I've only tried a couple of quite old whiskeys. I don't, did I mention when, you know, when a whiskey gets a bit older, you know, it gets more complex. And we talk about adds complexity to it. It doesn't mean better, it just means the taste change the compl and evolve. complexity that you mentioned before. Exactly. It, Not the taste. So what really what can happen, especially for the older ones, is they begin to take on so much flavour from the barrels that they actually become very herbal. Okay. Okay. Now it, it's quite a tricky one to explain, but basically they don't taste like whiskies that you will have probably tried. Even I yeah. don't mm. try them very often by the way. Um, 
it tastes um, usually quite rich. Um, it doesn't give you that same alcohol kick to it because it's much more mellow and rounded. Okay. It doesn't mean better. It doesn't mean better. It just means that they are older, they are more herbal, they're a bit more rounded in flavour. Mm. It does mean if you like something that's really, really smoky, you'll actually not get much smoky flavours mm. from the older whiskies because the smoke mellows out to the flavour of the cask. So for example, Lagavulin 26, and Lagavulin is renowned for being very smoky and peaty. I would love to try this whiskey, I've never tried it, but I reckon, and I've, again it's just a guess on my part, that the smoke will mellow out a little bit as it gets a bit older, is what happens. So for people that want really smoky whiskies, they actually want them to be as young as possible to get that smoky kick. But not everyone knows that, so a lot of people think they're, they're still looking for the older whiskies, and they say, oh, but I really want an older one, and then they look at the price and go, well, maybe not. How much? This what is Douglas' five-year pounds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, most of the whiskies on this side of the room, they are more investment level whiskies. Now, these are the ones that you buy, you put them into a cupboard or into a glass yeah. cabinet, you never touch them. Now, me personally, I'm a drinker. I am not a collector. I wouldn't trust myself. <laughs> one night, I want to know what that tastes like. Let's be honest. I mean, if you've got something there. Now, the way I look at whiskey, now, this is just the way I look at it, not the way the company views it. So I need to just put a disclaimer in there. <coughs> this is the way I look at it. This one in the middle here is 43 years old. Now, there's a fairly good chance that the people that actually made that will not be alive to see me put into the bottle. That's true. Even if they are alive, do you yeah. think they'll get the chance to try something that they actually made? I no. doubt it. And I always think to myself, well, when they were making that whiskey, they were never designing it as a drink to be invested in. They were designing it as a drink to be shared and enjoyed. Yeah. So I will admit that I get no money from whiskey whatsoever, but I get the enjoyment from it. Exactly. And that's just the way I look at it. Now, it, there, I, I didn't really understand the phrase that there is a whiskey for everyone, but I think what it really means is that they don't, whether you're looking to appreciate the flavour of it, whether you're looking for it as an investment, whether you just want you just enjoy the actual information about whiskey, because it's got a lot of heritage to it. There is a whiskey for everyone. You don't have to spend thousands of pounds exactly. on a whiskey. If you're going to drink it anyway, you, you know, you can find really nice ones for you know twenty to thirty pounds. You know, Johnny Walker Black Label yeah. is so popular for a reason because you know it's nice and smooth and easy to yeah. drink yeah. and it doesn't have to be this really complex thing. It is purely personal taste and that is the important thing to know. Um, and you know, there is not a right, there's not a wrong answer. Yes. You know, it is just your taste. Um, so my advice would really be go to a whiskey bar. If you go to the staff, the bar staff, and say, "Look, I'm really sorry, I don't know anything about whiskey. Well, where, where, where do I start?" It's our job to help. You know, that's what we do. You know, we we, we can match flavors. Um, and like I say, if you ever have whiskey, you just don't like it. Just say, you "Don't like that one." Can you try yeah. something else? You know, that's the way to get involved with it. Um, because the only thing I knew about whiskey before I was working in whiskey was I didn't like it. And everyone has what we call a whiskey journey. Now, everyone starts in the same way. No one ever has their first whiskey and goes, oh, that's the best drink. Another one of them, please. Mm -hmm. You know, you've kind of got to stick with it. But once you stick with it, you understand, okay, it's just 40% alcohol, that's all it is. I've got my head over that bit. It's just flavors, that's all it is. It is just flavors. So yeah, and like I say, flavors is what you want to Exactly. Yeah. I hope that helps a little bit for you. Yeah, that yeah, was one of the, the most unbelievable experience that I have. Oh, sorry. Right, yes, because no I didn't understand anything about the risk and mm -hmm. today I learned so much. Good question. Fortunately, we don't, I'm afraid. So you're not the first person to ask Guys, about it. Guys, that was what I was gonna um, say, I'm, explanation. I'm, I'm very sad about that I don't have a life. And I, uh, uh, then I, I, I dragged my girlfriend into other whiskey shops the, in my day The whole there is a couple of places to sell smaller bottles of That's really interesting. For a mini bottle, I've checked on Amazon. Especially for a pool, there's a tradition about this like me. For a mini bottle, it's a mini bottle.